Woohoo! Welcome back to the Shady Harbor with me, Little Fox. I've just um just logged in over the weekend. I did my hair. I got blue hair. It was supposed to be purple. What the fuck is this? I don't know. After after a couple of washes, I might put a uh, pink through it and uh, see how that works. But uh, I feel like uh, the the uh, gray streak um, or silver is what I put into it. Uh, worked better than I thought it would. But um, before I go much further, uh, yep, that's working. Sound is working. We, you can probably hear my game in the background. Um, ba -ba 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 flash! And, uh, oh, hello. Uh, let me just get the game up. <sighs> there we go. There we go. So we got some dailies to do, and then away we go. Oh, a bubble. Yay, bubbles work again. While I do that, I'm gonna crush some cans, because I forgot to do this. You can't see this, but I have... Over the weekend, I've built up... Eight Pepsi cans, and two... Luvies. For the win. Clerical work. A terrible of me. I was supposed to be entertaining. I'm doing the cleaning. I've seen people like make like can crushes, and I'm just like, but my hands, my hands are the can crushes. So I guess it is easier than you would think to uh, like cut yourself while doing that by accident. <laughs> so yeah. All right, I'm gonna figure this shit out quickly. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, I wonder if. Oh gosh, lots of items have sold. Holy moly! Bloodthorn shield, taking it, taking it. Oh, delete it. I sold a bunch of shit yesterday on the store. Ah, uh, the guild store. I need to donate, actually, to the guild. I'll do that today. Yeah, someone's bought a bunch of my lockpicks. I just sold them super cheap, because, like, fuck it. How much did that net me? Oh, yeah, 4,000. Also, or three point six gold. All right. Um, check my shizners, and then uh, yeah. Excuse you. Someone just snort. So the, the game just snorted in my fucking ear. Why? It was creepy. Oh, it's a clan fear. Ah, I see. All right, research. Nothing. Research. Oh, time to research. Oops, wrong button. What are we up to here? Greatsword, huh? Anything I can do with greatsword? No. I'm sure. Yes, curious. 
the Rubidite Cuirass of Health. Calcinium. So level my up, my blacksmithing up, and now I need another skill point. Fucking great. <sighs> Excel spreadsheet up now. Ah, no. Okay. I don't want a new one. I want this one. Yes. Polymod. Blacksmithing is up to level 40, which means that I need to upgrade my blacksmithing by one, which means I need to get another um, skill point. Okay. Um, cool. Well, that's that. I definitely don't have any skill points available. No. Okay, so yeah. Need a, another one there. I'm pretty sure I did the enchanting one. Yeah, I did. Jewelry. In What's next? This one. <sighs> Offensive penetration. Wow. See you in solitude, stranger. Damn right you are. Ooh, ha. <sighs> my reaction when I drop my can. Awesome. <sighs> Pardon me. Oh, yeah, that's right. I screwed up. Oh. Well. Do 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 do. This one. Do 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 do. That's weird. The hand was louder than it should have been. Stendar protect us. Let's get out there. And we move on to the next one. No! Crap! Crap! Whoops. Whoopsies! Oh well. have sent word that order has been restored. Well... Hmm. I can... Oops. It's a cool looking... Cool looking, uh, puppy.
Okay, we got heaps of time to wait for that shit. My inventory though, I need another 100,000 gold before I can even do um, one of the crafting writs that I've got running, so. That's all I can do with this character for now. Just double check that everything's leveled up. Double check my all of this stuff. Alchemy is done. Blacksmithing is done. Clothing is done. Enchanting. One, two, three. Ah, yes. There is one I have to do for enchanting. Yeah, no, that's fine. Provisioning and woodworking is done. Yeah, I just need one more point. Horse master. It's gonna be cool once it like is completely upgraded. Yeah. <clears throat> Good boy. I really want that new fox mount, but I'm pretty pissed off because it's locked without behind a paywall, literally. Anything <sighs> to research today? No, nope. not even tomorrow. Perhaps, perhaps. Uh, ah. Zero. Alright, double check. What do we got here? Four, four, four. Alright, so the ones with three are gonna be fine. Okay, and. <sighs> da, 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 da. Got another two days in that one. Who the fuck is that water Kalithal ca who's like such a bitch all the time? It's like I'm not your I'm not your soldier, bitch. I'm a merc. Chant materials. I'm not gonna even bother looking at um oh maybe I'll look at the Ah oh, crafting is I haven't put anything into warfare or fitness because I haven't decided how I'm gonna build this character. Probably for I I, I want to do like a debuff character, but like there's no real there's not a huge amount of um, like mechanics in Elder Scrolls for that.
All right, here we go. Oh. Ah. Hmm. All right, let's check that. Research. <sighs> Progression. Mm -hmm. Day 17 hours. That looks cool. Ah. Excellent. What have we got? Runs and hexes. Mace. Sword? Dagger. No. Apparel. Helm. I really wish that the stable master was there the was the lion cat dude. A moment, please. Nope. And that's all of them. Thing? Yeah. Um, yeah. Quit. <laughs> so easy. When I do all the prep the night before. Well, or in the afternoon. Alright, let's see if I can build this thing. Let's start building it.
so that's how it's going to look. So if I have five of them in there. I have a clear view idea of like what I want it to look like though. So height wise and the Three, three height. That's how it's gonna start. Strut. It's going to strut. I know words. I know words good. Hey, monkey game of the room. You find it funny that Bob Ross 24 7 streams is still up. I think that's awesome. It's one of my favorite things about the internet. Just stuff like that. So it's 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Ah! 15. Yes. So that's up by 4. 4, 8, 12. Yeah. I really want to see if I can make this look cool. Bob Ross. I'm going to do the curve though, or if, if a curve is even possible. So one, two, three is so it's three, 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 
three. So then there's four four connections, four um, truck connections per uh, one of this thing that I'm building here. Alright, cool. Do it make chains. Alright, I need to fix this this road bit as well because I've screwed this up. Basically, this all needs to come in by half a half a thing. What the fuck? Wait a second, did they fix this? Did they change it? Ah! Wait a second. What the fuck? Wait. Ah! I think they may have fixed this whole system of everything working in a particular way. Which, uh...
It used to be that we could place the awesome shop down. I think I fixed it. Oh, you fucks. You fucks. It's alright, that's alright, that's alright. Oh, fuck. Oh, gosh. Which means that the ones I've already got put down, I'm never going to be able to leave this save. <laughs> What the fuck? No. Fuck. Now. How am I gonna do this then now? Shit. Shit. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, uh. I can't... I can't do it. Uh... Shit. Um... Oh dear. I wonder if it still works outside of the blueprint maker. Ah, uh, that's all. That looks awful. Dear, dear me. Ugh. Maybe there's other buildings that it hasn't been fixed on. Let's try this one.
Nope. Use beams to put it right next to the machines. No, that doesn't seem to do fuck all to what I want to do. Shit. Ah. Uh, which means I would have to do everything manually in that case. Because it's not as if I can put that underneath. Unless I figure out a brand new way how to glitch things. I would have to figure out a brand new way to glitch half, to do a half meter glitch. it appears as though this doesn't work anymore. Thanks, Satisfactory. <laughs> Fucked up my whole way of building. Ah! Why do I build them like that anyway? I think it's just because it looks cool, but... Hmm. 
dare you make the game better and harder to glitch. I used to, it used to be that um, the the snapping for these is, was different, so... Wait, I did it! I did it! How did I do it? How did I do it? I did it! Aha! Okay, okay, woo! I figured out a way to do it. Woo! Oh, thank goodness! I thought I was worried that I would never be able to make things the way I normally made them ever again. So. Uh, yeah. Like, far out, that's, uh... <sighs> Yay! And now to fucking save this blueprint and never delete it. Woo! Oh, thank goodness for that. Holy shit. Thank goodness. That's actually a much easier way that I just discovered as well, which is kind of funny. Yeah. 
Wait, what is it called? What did I call it before? What did I call it in here? Road 4x4. Yes, that's fine. Um, set to directory. Icon. Ass halt. Where are you? Alright, and so when I put down this, sweet as, it's fixed. <sighs> okay. Okay, let's, and now that I know there's an easier way to do it, I can just do this. Dun, dun, dun. Oh yeah, wait. This is actually such a such an easier way to do it. Oh my gosh. Don't even need a blueprint for that shit. Wait. So yeah, that'll look good like that. Cool. I will do it one by one though. Hey, how's it going? You're a gamer. More military documents? What are the military documents about? Uh, military documents F16 someone someone trying to win an argument what like why though not unusual for uh, the military to be pretty shit at uh, doing that stuff, is it? Alright, so now I've got that sorted. Oh, War Thunder. Oh, I see. On the forum. Oh, 
todos. Wait, they're declassified. So they, so they just... I don't know, that seems pretty normal to me. I'm just surprised that, uh, like, the manuals aren't just well-known anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, I bet. I bet. In war games, yeah, definitely. Here we go. Now I can put down this one if I need to. Make it a little bit easier. Yay! Aha! It's looking good. It's like slightly lower, I think. But that's an acceptable... That's definitely acceptable for, for me. It does mean that all of these roads are wrong, though. But I can fix that pretty easily. Now I want to build that ramp. That is not the right ramp.
But yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know how to react to that. <laughs> Sorry. It's not really something I'm usually interested in too much. Um, I think it's pretty cool that they leaked the documents. Really? I think that's a pretty cool thing to do. Next WikiLeaks. I mean, like, they're not really leaking anything. They're declassified documents. It's the equivalent of, like, I don't know, just doxing someone. Well, I mean, like, I guess, I guess it's the equivalent, to me, like, it's the equivalent of, um, lips of TikTok crying about being doxed when they, when they when it was already public information. The only difference is, is that for some reason it's still illegal. But yeah, as far as I've seen, like, with, when it comes to those sort of communities, that sort of stuff is normal. You usually have a bunch of people who are, like, really, really knowledgeable in, like, the stuff that they talk about, so... Some of it was classified. That's so weird. What were they even trying to, um, what was the argument even over, though? Ugh. Too complicated for my for, for for my tastes. Oh yeah. Making blueprints. Make it easier for me to make what I wanna make.
And we got the two meter ramp. Yes. Just need to do the four meter one now. Hmm. What's the difference between build the two building modes, though? Blueprint. Bl what is the difference between blueprint and default? That's new. Alright, that's four meters.
Yay! Alright, let's play around with this shit. Oh, whoops. I shouldn't have deleted all of them. Ah. Excellent. Gosh, that's hard to do. Maybe from the other side it's easier. Ah, yes. Much easier. There we go. Bana! So much easier! Oh my gosh! Holy shit! I'm actually glad that they fixed that, because now uh, I actually have a much quicker and easier way of uh, getting the half meters right. And I've also got blueprints! Yeah! Blueprints work now!
There we go. Have the base down. It is 8.11. Alright, so I'm going to take a quick break, and then when I'm back, we're going to start doing talking about some stuff. We're going to talk about it. We'll do some, we'll do some interesting shit. Um, so don't go anywhere, or do. Either way, I will be right back after these short announcements. Bye! And we're back. We're back. Damn it. Just setting up my breakfast. Mmm, done randomly! Welcome back! I'm having breakfast. <laughs> I'm having breakfast. Cause it is breakfast time for me. How are you today? My favorite type of yogurt. Yogurt with bits in it. Passion fruit. Pavlova flavored, no less. Pavlova is my is the shit. I need to I need to learn how to make pavlova. Do you know what I was trying to look for recently? I was searching for uh, Masaharana. I wonder how to pronounce, actually pronounce that. Hold on, let's look that up. Ooh, catfish. I hope you didn't get prawns. Instead of what you ordered. Because then you would have gotten catfished. Yeah. I'm fucking hilarious. All the time. Every time. Okay. How to pronounce Masa Harina. Ma? Sa Arena. Oh, Masa Arena. Masaharana? No, wait, what? Arina. Arina. Oh, Arina. Arina. Say it. Masa. Oh my gosh. Masaharina. Yes, I want to find Masaharina. Which is actually quite difficult in Australia because it's more of an American thing. <clears throat> anyway, just came across this. This happened in Perth, and I am uh, curious as to whether it's the same uh, real estate agents that did this as mine. So a Perth woman is asked to pay higher rent, then finds landlord didn't authorize it. This is amazing. During the pandemic, Alex's property manager told her she had to start paying more rent, but her landlord didn't know anything about it and hadn't authorized a rental increase. Um... Alex's difficulties with the Perth rental began in May 2020 when she and her housemates' work hours were cut in half during the COVID pandemic and she decided to ask for a reduction in the $495 per week rent. That's insane. That's so expensive. A property manager gave them a form to fill in. They would speak to the owner, but any rent reduction we received would be need to be paid back in full on a play payment plan. Um... That's not legal. That's a lie. In Australia, like, you can you can fill a, in a form, but you don't have to pay back the money. It is a form to request a rent reduction. As in, you pay less rent. It doesn't need to be paid back. That's disgusting. 
and then they were told that the owner would not grant a rent reduction. In August 2021, she received an email offering a six-month lease renewal, increasing the rent to $530 a week. After a long exchange about outstanding maintenance issues at the property, the increase was negotiated to an extra $20 a week. We were given 10 days notice for the rent increase, also illegal, and told if we didn't accept it, we would be required to vacate instead. We started paying the additional money in early October, but when she was emailed a copy of the new lease agreement to sign on October 31st, she checked it carefully and noticed it specified the rent at the previous lower figure. After querying why the lease renewal specified a lower rent that what uh, she that that what she and her housemate were now paying, she received a surprising phone call from the property owner. The owner told Alex he had been asked to sign the new lease with the higher figure and had been told that this was because the tenant had requested to pay a higher rent. So the property manager has gone to the landlord and told the landlord that they asked to pay more rent. And then the landlord called the tenant. Holy shit. When I explained the email I received in August, the landlord was angry and assured me he had never authorized a rent increase and specifically instructed the agency not to go for one, even though they were putting pressure on him to do so. He had not been receiving the additional $20 per week in rent. These people are fucking awful, and I, I'm pretty sure I know exactly which rental agency did this. Zero reviews, okay. Bullshit. Only. No, these are all, um... Ah, oh, here we go. Google reviews. Yes. Tenants. Oh, that's interesting. Oh my gosh, they've cleaned it. Oh my gosh. Abrupt and rude four months ago. Yeah. A lot of fake ones on here. But yeah. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Whatever that says. You believe every human is good? Okay. Cool. Hmm. I'm okay. Having my breakfast. So yeah. He also told Alex that a request for a rent reduction during the pandemic had not been passed on to him. And that if he had, he would have agreed to it. So what's happened here is the property manager has basically um, made it more expensive for people to live through the COVID pandemic. And so happily, happily for Alex and her housemate, the landlord has taken over the management of his rental property himself. But yeah, 
In a statement, a WA consumer protection spokesperson said that changes in a tenancy agreement such as a rent increase in rent need to be done in accordance with the Residential Tenancies Act. Obviously. Um, yeah, 10 days notice is in insufficient as well. Uh, it needs to be... Um, I think it needs to be 60 days notice and it can't, it can't um, take effect for the first um, 30 days from memory. Yeah, 60 days notice. So, managing agent, so Joel Dignam, uh, executive director of advocacy group, um, man management, um, managing agents have strong financial reasons to increase rents and see tenancies turn over even when it's not in their landlord's interest. Better Ending is currently campaigning to ren end rental auctions where prospective tenants are encouraged to offer over the advertised rent to secure a lease in a tight market. That's where things are at in, at the moment in uh, Australia. It's like we can't actually even find rentals now. Or afford them. Agents will have an agreement with the owner and they'll get a small percentage of the weekly rent per week. But when they rent out the property, they may get one or two weeks rent as a flat payment. So every time they do a new rental uh, agreement, they actually get a bonus for doing that. Which, again, just fucks over the tenants. Yeah, obviously tenants are better off having a rent they can afford, and landlords are better off having stable tenants who can afford to remain in the property too. There just needs to be, like, a um, a rental cap right now put on every, all of this. Because that's exactly what happened to me. Hmm. They wanted to increase $50. It's really interesting. But, yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Well, in this case, the landlord wasn't the um, wasn't the worst part. It was the it was the uh, property managers. Property managers are the scum of the earth. They're like they're like the the leeches on the vampires of society. Hmm. They, I, 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 yeah, there is. I've never met a real estate agent um, who I wouldn't call a, a literal ghoul. <laughs> they, they, they have always treated uh, me and um, everyone else I know with uh, no respect or care. Like, over COVID, like, everyone was struggling and um, we were expected uh, to... And we, we, we you know, caught, we, were, we caught up on our rent and then they decided to raise the rent uh, another $50 and uh, want to take the entire bond. So that puts us out uh, two grand, I think. Unless we fight it. Who knows, like, you know, how possible that is going to be to uh, action. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. It's awful. But something a little bit more happy. Just make more money, lol. Okay. Give me money, then. Five dollars a month, motherfucker. There we go. Now, I was watching this last night. Um, and... Yeah, th this actually has some really cool stuff in it. Like video game, video. If if you if you know anything about me, you know how much I love Majora's Mask. Um, 
Yeah, I, I technically have an OnlyFans, but um, I d don't actually post on it. Um, the only reason I've got it is uh, because at some stage I might like um, for funsies do like a a risque, more risque game um, that I can't uh, you know play on Twitch. Oh yeah. Go delete. Delete. All right. But yeah, this is really cool. Did you know? Up until about halfway in development, Majora's Mask was planned to have an adult mask. The Hyrule Historia shows some concept art of Adult Link with a note saying yes i do need to play the link furry game majora's mask but for some 100%. reason there are illustrations for adult link the folks who wrote the hyrule historia didn't know why that art was in there but we managed to figure it out by translating some old japanese magazines ourselves according to co-director yoshiaki koizumi an What's adult mask name? was originally planned as a bonus feature he said until that's not the name by the the game the name what, what do you mean what name what name Fan only fans, fansly. What? On fans me, fansly. I'm so confused. Uh. Hey, yes. Halfway into development, there was a mask that let you turn into Adult Link. In this I'm game, so Link can transform into different races, so Adult Link would have just been a bonus feature. But art director Imamura pointed out that just turning into an adult wasn't very interesting, and it didn't make Link stronger or anything. So we decided not to include Adult Link this time. The Hyrule Historia theorized that maybe these sketches were prototypes for Fierce Deity Link, but in that same magazine, the developers say no, the adult mask was completely separate. The actual origin. I do, I do remember hearing about the uh, the adult uh, mask stuff. Um, when, when I was playing it, um, but I didn't know that, I, I didn't know the Fierce Deity mask and the, um, and the Giant's mask were, got, were originally the same thing. That's pretty cool. Deity mask was that at one point they made a mask. I always found it weird that you could only use the Giant mask in so one overpowered, boss. It totally broke the game, so they split its abilities in half and made two masks out of it. The Giant's mask and the Fierce Deity mask. In the final game, you can only use the Fierce Deity against bosses, and the Giant's Mask is only usable in one room, Twin Mold's Boss Chamber. They're two yeah, of the coolest masks so weird. in the game, it's but like, these restrictions would... mean you only get to wear them a few minutes during an entire playthrough. But it wasn't exactly. always supposed to be that way. During Although there, there was something really sat satisfying about uh, beating the crap out of um, Majora with, uh, with the Fierce Deity Mask. After after working so long and hard to get those um, to get that mask, just being able to uh, use it in the end was uh, really satisfying. <laughs> really fucking and satisfying. The other co-director, AGO Numa, said it was only proper that they can be worn anywhere, just like all the other. Well, they were going to add that. that. Gonna they were going to add that into the game. Time they unfortunately didn't have. There were some complications. Yeah. So, so this game, this game was made on the end of the Nintendo 64 uh, life star life cycle, um, and that's why, like, not a lot of people actually played it, um, and it became more of a cult classic than anything else. Uh, the the thing was that they only gave it a year in. Dev. They only gave the devs one year to uh, make the game. Um, like which, that, the doors yeah. in Clock Town are big enough Fuck for a that. to pass through, but the fierce deity is too tall, so they would have had to make special animations to make him duck down. Shigeru Miyamoto only gave them one year to make the game, and the release date was coming up soon, so they just didn't have the time to make it happen. You can still screw around with both masks in Clock Town using cheats, but it's super glitchy because, you know, they didn't have the time to make it work right. 
These developer stories were printed in the Japanese magazine Nintendo Dream. More specifically, the extra mini magazines included with the July, August, and September 2000 issues. There's about a dozen pages of developer secrets, behind the scenes stories, and answers to fan theories inside. Insider details that the writers of the Hyrule Historia didn't even know. So we had them all translated, and that's where most of the information in today's video is going to come from. In one issue, programmer Kenzo Hayakawa says, Actually, the position of most of the stars is determined by the player's name. When night falls, look for your own unique constellation. I guess you could say every playthrough of Majora's Mask is personalized, depending on what name you choose when the game begins. To test it out, we made two save files, one where we named ourselves Link, and another named Zelda. Then, in each one, we stood in the same spot and stared at the same patch of sky. As you can see, Link's sky has about twice as many stars as Zelda's. Nintendo Dream's readers knew this little secret since the game came out, but it wasn't known in the West until 2021, when a modder named Zell discovered it in the game's code. Something else most Westerners don't know is that the Great Bay's giant turtle is based on Kinsan Ginsan, a pair of Japanese twins famous for living well past 100, making them the oldest twins in the world. Kinsan died when so was in development, so the designer used her face as. I always, I always felt like the the turtle was such like a kind soul. It just like, I I loved that turtle. That turtle was just like, used to just like laugh slowly. It just felt like an old person with like a lot of love in their heart. Turns out, it was based on old people. Creation for the ancient turtle. We think that might be why Link gives a long wave goodbye to the turtle at the temple. The designer didn't say that, but it's what it looks like to us. Saying goodbye to the famous Kinsan who lived to 107. Her sister Kinsan died a few months after Majora's Mask released. May they rest in peace. In another issue, Miyamoto says he wanted to add a fishing minigame, but not just improving on the fishing in Ocarina of Time, because that might end up too similar to mother creator Shigesato Itoi's bass fishing game. He said, Rather than improving on the fishing from the last game, I want to do something new, like Jabu Jabu fishing or something. Maybe the moon won't fall if you catch Jabu Jabu or something, but the reward will probably just end up being rupees. Like, time is money, so you can use rupees to buy time from a time merchant. It sounds good, right? We're still thinking about it. None of those ideas- What the hell? That, that, is, that, that is the most, like, disjointed sentence I've ever heard, but, like, I know that he's quoting the dev- uh, sorry, the- I don't know, the uh, team lead, or I can't remember, it was Miyamoto, maybe. But that's hilarious. Game, although the time merchant might have ultimately become the banker who breaks the laws of time. The guy who would have made the fishing minigame was Kazuaki Morita, a real-life fishing aficionado. He made the series' first fishing game in Link's Awakening, and secretly created the fishing hole in his off hours for Ocarina. But he said if players lost track of time at Terminus Fishing Hole, the world would get destroyed, so he didn't make one. Apparently they had a change of heart though, because fishing holes were eventually added in Majora's 3DS remake, and you can even catch Lord Chabu I got that Chabu, one. who's basically a tiny version of Jabu Jabu. Catching him doesn't stop time doing or doing really give you anything at all though, just bragging rights. According to series composer Koji Kondo, each Zelda game's music has a specific theme. Wind Waker has an Irish influence, Twilight Princess is more reminiscent of Eastern Europe, and Majora's Mask is more like Chinese opera, which sounds like this. Yeah. Fucking love music. I, I love, like, different There's music from around, around the two, world. But Majora's theme and the Happy Mask Salesman's theme are a couple good examples. In another issue, the cinema scene director says only half the cutscenes made it into the final game. One he specifically mentions getting cut was a great fairy teaching Link how to do a spin attack. That scene's still on the cartridge though, and was discovered years later, along with cutscenes for the other four fairies in Termina, although they're clearly unfinished. One that's almost finished shows Link having to do sit-ups and push-ups to earn his double defense upgrade. So instead of the fairies just giving Link his rewards, it seems they were originally going to make him work for it. Unfortunately, it appears most of the other. Wait, the the thing is, I don't know. I don't know whether it's just an implanted memory at this point, but I feel like I remember that scene, like of 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 like having to you know do that for the fairy. Oh. But I must I must just be like remembering things wrong. I feel like I did did that that animation did play back in the day when I was playing it. So maybe maybe I'm just like 
Insane. Scrapped cutscenes got erased to free up cartridge space. A lot of ideas had to get scrapped because of the one year deadline. In one of these magazines, Miyamoto says, a lot of people ended up working overtime one, due to the sheer yeah. volume of work that had to be done. Suffice it to say, this was one tough year, I assure you. As long as it was finished, anything was acceptable. I made it clear yeah. that that's what was most important. At the start, the staff seemed pretty stressed out. They were like, there's no way we can make it in a year. Toward yeah, I, yeah, buddy, I don't think the issue was them like worrying about getting the game completed. I think it was like crunch. I think that, you know, like they would like... You, you were destroying your workers in order to make a fucking video game. As the end of development, Miyamoto tried to ease the tension with some small talk and what he calls naughty stories, but the Zelda team found him unbearable and said they just didn't have time for his rambling. Aonuma says he had to pull it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, naughty stories. This sounds like Blizzard. This sounds like just, this just sounds like Blizzard shit. <laughs> One fucking hell. And didn't even have time to play the game start to finish before it released. Majora's That's writers fucked. revealed that some of the NPCs are actually speaking for the developers. Scriptwriter mm -hmm. Mitsuhiro Takano said, We put our feelings into the mouths of Termina's residents. Like when work was getting backed up, we wrote one carpenter to say, Damn, I'll have to stay up again. I wonder if I'll finish this. And damn, guess I'm staying up again tonight. I wonder if it'll be ready in time. Another example I wrote when our work was interfering with home life was the mayor saying, don't tell my wife. And after we completed development, I wrote the mask salesman to say, you've met with a terrible fate. I fucking love that. You know, the, the, the most creepiest fucking line in the game, one of the most like iconic lines in Majora's Mask, was the result of workers pissed off about crunch. That just says everything about the gaming industry at the end of the day. Like, how how much human suffering, how much human suffering uh, where it goes into, like, making the things that we love and enjoy. It's depressing. And it's so fitting that such a depressing game like Majora's Mask would, like, have that. Like, half the, I wonder, like, how much of that, like, depressing feeling you get playing, playing that game comes from just how depressed the people fucking making the game were. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Like, we get treated so fucking badly. In other words, the guys who worked on Majora's Mask felt they'd met with a terrible fate to have to make a Zelda game with such a tight deadline. At one point, yeah. they went to a co-worker's wedding and- Probably a terrible fate having to work under a guy who tells naughty stories in order to uh, raise morale. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't know about that. I yeah, unbearable rambling. It sounds like he probably stole stole breast milk and uh, made 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 all the men go get drunk and uh, crawl under all the desks. Fucking and not to mention the amount of um, women that worked on the game that wouldn't have even been uh, um like put in the credits. Or, like, their names changed to pseudonyms. It's just disgusting. Still weren't off the clock. Takano remembers, the groom had his hairstyle done like cafes. When we saw that, we thought, we can use this. We were hardly paying attention to the wedding ceremony, just saying, this could all be game content. Koizumi Ooh. chimes in, it was right around that time there was an uproar over North Korea's Taepodong missile, and so we were joking around like, is it really a good idea to have a wedding when we're on the brink of destruction? And Takano, Aonuma, and I were all excited at what good material this could make. The thought... The world's gonna end, let's make a game about it! Holy shit, Majora's Mask being like, be one of the major, um, like, side plot lines of this game was a wedding ceremony and you at the end of the game like the wedding ceremony ceremony happens five minutes before the moon is supposed to crash into the earth and, and that was like just not even an allegory that was just basically we're at a wedding and north korea is shooting shooting off missiles ha <laughs> lol I guess that's how, I guess how, that's how, um, I guess that's how, how depressed you must be about having to work crunch. Like that, the idea of being at a wedding and a missile falling into, into it, you know, we might all die.
lol and just like laughing at it you have to be so desensitized from everything you know, to like work that hard is it really okay to put on a happy face and have a wedding isn't a missile about to fall on us that was a perfect allegory for the moon falling then they skipped yep. the wedding reception because they were scared of getting vaporized but they weren't only short on time Cartridge space was a concern as well. The devs say they were constantly having to shave things down and search for content they were willing to cut so it'd all fit. All the boss animations took up an especially big chunk, like the first boss Odal was dancing. Speaking of which, Odalwa's name is a pun on the Japanese word Odarua, which means dance. In development, the bull boss was originally named Hashilwa, a pun on the word run, and the fish boss was Oyorg, a pun on the word swim. Every boss was named after the verb they represented, but all their names ended up getting changed, except Odalwa, who's the only boss in the final game still named after his verb to dance. Majora's Mask is sort of the black sheep he was series, so cool. with a story, setting, and tone very different to what came before. But there was one earlier Zelda game that was also pretty unique, Link's Awakening, which took place yes! entirely in a dream. I've played that, that game. game's weirdness was mostly thanks to one man, Yoshiaki Koizumi. He's long had sort of an adversarial relationship with Miyamoto when it comes to storytelling, like when he snuck Rosalina's storybook into Mario Galaxy without the big guy's permission. In one of these magazines, he says, I worked on the plot of Link's Awakening. I did the main story, and Kensuke Tanabe wrote the side plots. I made quite a strange story, and afterwards, Miyamoto told me he'd never let me do it again. But I consider that a compliment. I had wanted to do something that wasn't at all Miyamoto-esque. He goes on to say that for the next game, Ocarina of Time, Miyamoto only let him work on a few side quests, like the ones focused on Skull Kid and the Mask Shop. After oh, Ocarina, Kozumi so started good. working on a non-Zelda game that he described as using that's certain so systems cool. to replay something. No, like that. weirdness is is what worked. Not just in not just in Majora's Mask, but in Link's Awakening. That that really really like that. Un it's just you could. F Feel the dreamlike axe atmosphere in this like 2D black and white game. Uh, just, I love these people. They they just amaze me. Over and over, he said, the plan I had was a game that had a fixed time period of three days or a week or so, and the townspeople. See, had I fixed... uh, that's one thing I don't know anything about. Unfortunately, um, I've I've never really played Mario. Schedules they followed. It was while doing that that I went together with Miyamoto to America. The whole time he was complaining about how things weren't going well with Majora's development, and I was just like, oh yeah, that's too bad. I was busy planning that other game, and I was incredibly motivated. But then Miyamoto, his little whispers started calling to me Zelda, Zelda, Zelda. <laughs> and before I knew it, my game was cancelled. I was shocked. Once we got back to Japan, I had my entire situation explained to me, and I said I would join the Majora team, but only if I was allowed to do things my way. After that, Koizumi inserted a lot of the concepts from his cancelled game into Majora's Mask. Three days played over and over, townspeople moving around on fixed schedules, and so on. Koizumi That's was so responsible cool. for- Like, one of the coolest things about the game is how they used all of the, um, all of the character models, uh, and uh, they reused so many assets from the, from Ocarina of Time, giving it, like, if you've played Ocarina of Time, um, first, it gives Majora's Mask this really, really weird atmosphere, like, that's layered on top of the weird, like, not just, like, the the storyline alone is weird, the concepts in the game is are weird as well, but, like, the way that, that, that you see all of these familiar assets, and, like, as a child, I saw, I'm like, oh, that's this guy, but he's doing something different now, like, oh, there, there's two of this guy, that this one guy's got a twin now. And stuff like that, and oh, and there were you know there, there were characters in Majora's Mask which used, which used to be like bosses in Ocarina of Time, and the way they reused assets, I I just it just felt to me like just almost it just just gave that we really weird dreamlike aspect to the game. It's it, it just it it just blows my mind, and like when when you think about how much of the game was was the result of these sort of like almost happy accidents in a way but at the same time as well it does make me feel really really guilty for enjoying such enjoying a game in that that was the result of a lot of human suffering like crunch is no fucking joke um yeah it's it's sad I wish that wasn't a part of the game, but 
it makes sense that it is in the context that uh, you know the the way they railed against the the development developing uh, bosses or whatever. Uh, with the story, had a blonde princess that loved looking at the stars with the mother, but then her mother died while looking up at the stars. There was a shooting star that had land. They were the literal with the person being a mother god that nurtures stars into coming galaxies. Gosh, it's crazy. It's like video games and and the lore that comes with them. Just, there's so much there. This is fantastic. I love it everything that happened inside Clockdown, and Aonuma was in charge of everything outside, although Koizumi eventually invaded his territory and took control of Romani Ranch, arguing that it was really an extension of the town. And that's how Koizumi became Majora's co-director, and the game turned out as weird as it did, despite Miyamoto saying he'd never let him do it again. Speaking of weirdness in Romani Ranch, there's a cutscene most Zelda fans will never see, even if they get 100% completion. If you do the milk delivery side quest more than once, sometimes you're only rewarded with a gold rupee, but there's also a chance of getting a more adult reward. A special cutscene where Kremia thanks Link with a big hug, and his face is squeezed between her. Uh, I got that! Moves. The game says, I, I got feel that! Like warm and fuzzy inside. I got that! Oh my gosh! You get used to this. In one of these Japanese magazines, Koizumi says, That was born out of a mistake. When we were setting up Link's position, we accidentally put him too close, and his face got lodged inside Kremia's model. When we saw that, we immediately wrote up a way to include it in the game. The script of director course and they I did. thought that would be any boy's dream. And the interviewer says, Yeah, I know. I was pretty happy about that. The whole development team actually had sort of a rivalry, dividing themselves up into two teams, Kremia fans and Anju fans. The two girls are friends, but the game hints at sort of a love triangle, with Kremia having a secret crush on Anju's fiancé. When the interviewer asked Aonuma which team he was on, he said neither girl was really to his liking. Others, like cutscene programmer Naoki Mori, had stronger feelings. He said, Personally, I think Kremia, who hides her loneliness by smiling, is a better woman than Anju, who lets her unhappiness bubble up to the surface. Then he asks the magazine's readers, but what do you think? I don't know, I guess let us know in the comments under this video if you're Team Anju or Team Kremia. Besides Koizumi- I don't know, I like, I, I, I seem to remember them being teenagers, so like, mm, okay. The influence on how Majora turned out was Takuya Imamura who's probably best known as the creator of characters like Star Fox, Captain Falcon, and Tingle. Majora's Mask is actually kind of named after him. According to these magazines, the Japanese title Mojura is a mix between Imamura and Jumanji. Yeah, the Robin Williams movie. Jumanji was kind of a big deal back then. Just like Koizumi, Imamura was brought onto the team mid-development when they were really struggling. Interestingly, I assume though, most Japanese games are... Uh made without the best worker relations to Japanese workers, concerts, but yeah, but they're, they're literally spending day day and night in the office during wind of the first three months to be able to have things like the first area being the Pokemon sequel. Yeah. Yeah. Neither of them even wanted to work on Zelda. Throughout these magazine interviews, Koizumi and Imamura made it clear they were pretty much forced to work on Zelda. Imamura was offered the job of Majora's art director. He tried to refuse, but didn't have a choice, which turned out to be a blessing in disguise because the game wouldn't have been the same without him. If you'd gone oh to gosh. the 1999 Space World trade show, you'd see the moon didn't have a face, not in the playable demo, and not huh. even in the promotional art. That's because Imamura added the moon's face about two months before the game was finished, and the moon's tear and most of the other moon-related content was created soon after. He told Nintendo Dream, it really tied the whole game together. The moon's face was originally something I drew as a concept art sketch, and it just so happened that I drew a face on the moon, and Koizumi really liked it. Koizumi told me to give the moon a face that looked like Majora's Mask. But we I fit. Him, Not right now. This face, <laughs> I figured <laughs> we're, we're, we're looking at Majora's Mask. Go with a face I like. No one's going to complain. It's fine. And besides, I've got seniority. Imamura says he originally drew the face of one of their superiors, but later changed it to the moon we know today. The inside of the moon was a different. It's so aspect. creepy. Like this entire time you're playing this game, and this moon is just like going bah, on top of you as if it's going to fucking crush you to death. Gosh, they really, re they really nailed it. Yeah, Miyamoto. Uh, no, I doubt it. I doubt it. Like him talking about the. They're, they're mentioning um, what was it? What was it they called it? Um, uh, uh, I don't know. Sex jokes all the time. I think. It's basically how that went. Ugh. Right. So three. Right, uh, Adult humor, yeah. Fuck. Jeez. 
All right, so this is one half, I believe, of what it is. So... So that will be going to here. Hey. No, I wanted to have it to be four by four. Hold on. I just can't Originally, it was more like a graveyard, but later on, they changed it to a grassy hill. An idea they got from space battleship Yamato. The 1970s anime generally considered the granddaddy of Gundam and the entire space opera genre. Yamato's plot is actually pretty similar to Majora's Mask. In the game, Earth's threatened by an evil force that's making the moon fall, and Link's gotta go to the moon huh. to save the world at the last minute. In the anime, Earth's threatened by an evil force making meteors fall, and the heroes have to go to the planet Iskandar to save the world at the last minute. And according to Koizumi, Iskandar was the direct inspiration for the inside of Majora's Moon, which is pretty clear when you see them side by side. Explaining why, he said, With the world of Majora being so strange, the inside of the moon being like the planet Iskandar provides contrast by being ordinary. In a fairy tale yeah. world, it's a realistic world. Or maybe I should say a picturesque world that makes you feel the greatest sense of unease. Clock down yep. change too. Originally, it was a medieval. Especially year like how open the area is. Is um, in a lot of the game, like apart from like Termina Field, um, is very open and stuff. Um, but having that that all of that empty space in like the final area. You're just expecting something bad to happen because there's so much space for it to happen, like everything to go wrong at once. Like so, such a so fucking good at capturing those atmospheres. Endless low grass plains with a single the train of hill, yeah. Town. But the devs... Yeah, and it's like the it's like um the uh, subversion of that Japanese trope of having that you know the the lover's tree on top of the hill, like you, this this is the the event you've worked so hard to come to but at the same time you are dreading that event happening it's uh yeah it's it's a really intense atmosphere felt like it was too similar to ocarina of time koizumi said we also weren't happy with how the towns were at that point. Overall, it was pretty weak. So I asked our artist Yusuke Nakano to draw some quick concept art with a pencil. I was surprised to see that he made it all in full color, but those pictures got us the full go-ahead to go in that direction. He suggested we yeah. set it during a carnival, and we immediately decided to go with that. One of the guys who had to do the grunt work of actually rebuilding clock... It's, li it's, it's liminal spaces. That's what it is. We've always been good at using liminal spaces to make things creepy. We just haven't had the language to describe it, I think. So. This is the center point. I think that's right. And started crying, but they say the tears ultimately paid off because what he ended up making was a lot better than the medieval clock down they started off with. When Majora's Mask was remade for the 3DS, Aonuma was asked about a few fan theories that cropped up over the past 15 years, like that Link's adventures in Termina are all a dream. He gets knocked unconscious in the opening cutscene. A lot of the characters are sort of dreamlike reimaginings of people in Hyrule, and one big hint is the inclusion of the Ballad of the Windfish. In Link's Awakening, Link plays the same tune to end the Windfish's dream, which erases the island where the game takes place. So is Termina a dream as well? Aonuma said no. The reason that Wait, this they song use the same one? Awakening was used in this game really came down to a decision by the sound team. They Wait, they used the same song? Something that would fit the theme. And since the previous game was about collecting instruments, it made sense that you would want to use that for a band in this case. For us, really, it was just a playful choice that referenced a previous game and nothing more than that. However, I love that people think about stuff like this, and I think it shows how they feel about the franchise as a whole that they're interested in these possibilities. Another theory is that Termina is a metaphor for the five stages of grief. Denial anger bullying, I hate that depression. I fucking hate that like the whole idea that that I, I hate it when we like so the only it was a dream um storyline that kind of worked was um Link's Awakening uh because like the whole point is you know the I the, the, throughout the whole thing like that they, they they they're very aware of that 
trope, and it, and it makes sense within the storyline. That's an example of how you can do that stuff well. But when it comes to, like, taking a game like Majora's Mask and the, saying that... Um, you know, oh, it was, it was, it was, it's all about grief and stuff. Like, you can say that about anything because the, because the parts of, um, grieving process and all of that, that makes up everything. Like, everything is made up of that. I mean, being a dream, Majora's Mask being a dream. Uh, no, 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 I'm not happy with the, the, the Majora's Mask being just a dream. See, my favorite, my favorite, um, fan theory was the idea of um, Akana Kingdom creating a mask in order to kill the gods. So that, to me, is an exciting and interesting um, theory rather than it was a, it was all a dream. Or, you know, they're, they're grieving the loss... He was grieving the loss of Navy. It's just like... Mm. <sighs> like, it's too easy, in my opinion. I just find it, like, just derivative and, like... Mm. I don't like it. No. No, I don't. Why does Navy get hate? I mean, like, people jokingly laugh about her being annoying with the with her voice, but like that's more jokingly, right? Or am I was I completely misreading the discourse? People say she's annoying. Well, I mean, like, yeah, but it's, that, that's funny. It's funny that she's annoying. <laughs> what? <laughs> People despise her. Well, they can, like, get wrecked scrubs, because Navy, Navy is uh, awesome. ...and acceptance. The townsfolk are in denial that the moon is going to destroy everything they hold dear. The Deku King is punishing the monkey out of anger. Darmani's ghost is bargaining for a return to the world of the living. Lulu's fallen into depression after the loss of her eggs. And Ikana is the land of death, representing the final stage of grief, acceptance. Was all this done intentionally by the developers, or was it no. just the fans' interpretation? Again, Aonuma basically said no. The concept was invented by the fans, exactly. not the writers. Quote, it's certainly... They had one year to make this game. There, there are no, there are no actual like the fan theories that I like. I know aren't actually true. Like they're just, they're just coincidences. They're just the result of things being put together. It's, it's seeing faces in clouds. You know what I mean? That, that, that's, that's what this stuff is. There was no deeper message to it. It was just a really cool game built around really interesting concepts, and it just happened to uh, spark a lot of conversation about um, why it was made in that particular way true that each one of these different episodes you talked about has a slightly different emotional cast to it. One feels like it's tinged with sadness, and another with anger. That certainly was intentional. But I also want to point out that it's not that each of these episodes has only one emotion that they're conveying. There are certainly other notes that we're trying to hit as well. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's never explicitly said that he's searching for Navy. And unless, unless they've said, like, the directors have said it, like, the, maybe they have, but, like, I don't know. It doesn't have to be Navy. It doesn't have to be, the, even have to be the same link. And the reason we did this is to allow the player to experience that emotion, to give them a chance to hook into the emotion. No, they were, um, they, 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 they were looking for a lost friend. It's the same link. See, I I feel like um, I've heard I I've heard that it's Navy. Like there are some people who say that uh, he was looking for the Skull Kid, and that like um, that's who he was looking for. Um, because he met the link link. Uh, they met the Skull Kid, and um, played around together, had fun. Just, 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 uh, they, thems being they, thems. ...tone of the scene and react to it and feel like they want to accomplish something in the game as a result of it. Another curiosity was brought up to Aonuma. The other three transformation masks are the spirits of an individual Deku, Goron, and Zora. So whose soul is in the Fierce Deity Mask? His answer? <laughs> The best I can give you is just a suggestion. The best way to think of it is that the memories of all the people of Termina are inside the Fierce Deity Mask. 
As for why it's so painful when Link puts on the transformation mask, he said it's because the spirits of the dead have unfinished business. However, yeah. some mysteries were left intentionally vague. Are the mask collectors on the moon the mask salesman's kids? Did Kafe turn back into an adult at the end, or was he stuck as a child forever? In these Japanese magazines, Koizumi says those questions were left unknowable on purpose. There are no yeah. answers, but he enjoys seeing fans cook up theories to answer them anyway. Did you also know that Nintendo tried remaking Zelda 2 in 3D? Or that Ura Zelda what? was planned to have online? For more on that, check out the video on screen. If you enjoyed hearing my voice, my name's King K. I make video essays on video games like Zelda, Kingdom Hearts, Sonic, and Pokemon. Subscribe for more videos like this one, and thanks to Jacob Newcomb for his translations, and Eurasia M for recording footage. And thank you for watching. Do 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 So what is that? One, two, one, two, three. No, that's the wrong way around. Ooh, it's starting to look interesting. The upsetro heteros. Who is upsetro heteros? Where are we looking at? Oh yeah, yeah. Wait, have you have you never watched um Tara Mooney? Tara Mooney's awesome. Um, but I do need to take a quick break to do lady stuff. Um, so don't go anywhere or do. Um, but when we get back, we'll. Do more stuff. Woo! I'm back. Speaking of crunch, this is what I've got to eat right now. Um, it is nah. loaded chips. With my with with my own, um, I like taco mints basically. Mm, taco mints. I want to make my own tacos, like the shells, taco shells. Gonna be tricky, but I need to find. I just need to find a place that sells the right flour. Hmm. Oh yeah. So, what I wanted to talk to talk to you about is this. This is something that means a little bit to me, since it's a video game I play a lot, and I like it. I've got a graph here. What does that graph tell us? What is this? What is this graph? This is the historical population chart over the last five years. Right. Um, as you can see, like there's been a lot of dips, a lot of like ri rises. So like 2021 was that it's uh, the game was at its uh, most popular, but today, 2022, it's uh, not doing too well. I mean, it's still ranking nine out of 138 of all. But, uh, 
Where is all time? Damn it. So this is the five year this is you can we can see a five year breakdown, but uh The game's been out for about a decade, for almost a decade now. So, Little Fox, I hear you ask, why are you talking about Elder Scrolls Online as if I should care? Well, dear viewer, I'm happy to tell you. What's happened recently is that I, is that Microsoft has laid off uh, about 10,000 staff. Joining, uh, I think, Google and Apple uh, in the layoffs. Now, what that means is, and the reason I bring, in, I bring up Elder Scrolls Online is, as you can see, the player base is uh, stagnating, and this year is kind of a make or break for a game that I really enjoy playing. And it appears as though they... Uh, not interested hold on a second sorry that scared the shit out of me it's too fucking loud anyway so it's make or break for this year for elder scrolls online uh because uh it's been bleeding play uh, it's player bla player base for um you know uh or, <laughs> For uh, you know, over a year now, uh, going up and down, and uh, they really do need to come out with some new content, which will get people interested in the game. Aside from um, microtransactions that uh, I'm unable to access, those bastards doing that. Um, but again, not the point of what I need to talk about today. The real point being that 10,000 people laid off is going to lead to crunch. So, um, yeah, 10,000 jobs slashed in one day uh, because a sizable chunk of those were from the game studios, including Bethesda. So, <sighs> this, re this figure represents less than 5% of the company's total employee base. 5%! of your employees is a huge fucking amount. 10,000 employees? Like, at a time where Microsoft is making more money than ever, you know, profit-wise, it's going... It, it should be hiring more people. You know? That's, that's how businesses grow, right? Well, it's interesting to note that there's the... As the um, use of... Uh, chat gpt and other ai services rises a lot of these tech jobs seems to seem to be disappearing so we're looking at live service games such as halo infinite fallout 26 elder scrolls online all three of which have been facing problems of their own halo infinite from like a really really shaky launch and uh the slow rollout of features Fallout 76 um, and Elder Scrolls Online suffering from uh, lack of oversight and a seagull. Uh, I think I've, <laughs> I've I've seen it called the, uh, like a seagull sort of style of management in which um, the management comes through um, like a seagull and shits on everything and then it fucks off. Like that's that's basically how it all runs. From what I've heard in this com in this company, so why are they firing staff in like fucking companies that in companies that um in, in their IPs that are already struggling? So it doesn't bode well for the game and the rest of his team. His single player campaign side has uh, was rep reportedly hit hard with as many as sixty layoffs. Fucking hell. Um, so Elder Scrolls Online itself did lose workers, including a community manager, although we don't know how many. Uh, PR against Bethsoft appears to have been hit as well. Um, 
So Beth Bethesda is also planning multiple big reveals next week, including the annual reveal for Elder Scrolls Online. So like, so the Elder Scrolls Online teasers, they're hinting at Hermaeus Mora, which is pretty cool. A crab, um, existential horror of a crab god. Um, is is like it's a really cool idea for a storyline, but how are they gonna like come up with anything decent if they don't have enough people working on it? And Microsoft is still trying to purchase Activision Blizzard. Why are they laying off people? They're trying to expand, but they're also just laying off people. I mean, this is what corporations do. They lay off people in order to make, like, a minuscule amount of money, throw it to the shareholders, and then incre inflate <clears throat> their price so they can consume more of other companies. Hmm. I like having access to, you know, Activision Blizzard games through Game Pass. But at this point, like, I'd rather give all that shit up. I mean, like, I'm not going to play a Blizzard game again, but, you know. <clears throat> but, yeah. So, um, the Communication Workers of America, the union umbrella under which uh, Zenimax's QA work is now organized, issued a statement. Um, representatives with the CWA have been in touch with Microsoft, and the company recognizes its obligation to bargain over any proposed layoffs of CWA members at Zenimax. This is why you need to unionize, by the way. Because you have absolutely zero protection against layoffs. Zero. Unless you have are ah, at least part of a union. Because at least then they have to negotiate. Yeah. Well, if they can't even, like... If they can't even, um, pay that, like, have, run the company, right, with, 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 um, the amount of workers. That, um, they were before, like, if they can't even do that. Why, why, why should they be able to take control of another company and potentially do the exact same thing? It's just ridiculous. It's disgusting. Disgusting. Yeah, there needs to be more protection <clears throat> again. Uh, protections against this sort of stuff because <coughs> because it just keeps happening. It just keeps happening, and and there doesn't seem to be any kind of recourse to this bullshit. At all. Do -do. Yeah. So yeah, we've got that to look forward to. So potentially they're going to destroy um, multiple IPs through this bullshit. <sighs> I'm not going to be able to do anything about it. I'm just going to watch as the games that I, like, enjoy playing get, you know, destroyed by this sort of stuff. But it's business as usual, I guess. It's just like more... We're hearing about more and more profits from these multinational corporations, but we're seeing less and less... Um, like... The work is being treated worse and worse, basically. I'm doing this wrong now, right now.
This is looking pretty cool. They're like, how long are these, like, corporations going to be able to go ahead and, like, fire all of its employees, all of their employees one by one until, like, we just start realizing that there's going to be nothing left for the workers at all like how long until it's too late to do anything about it and um, the companies just be like all right well I mean this game's a write-off and just keep on just putting more and more stuff on the back burner Yeah, this actually looks pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, it just doesn't seem to be... Things just seem to be looking worse and worse over time, and nothing seems to be getting better. I, I'm honestly at this point looking at uh, places like Cuba and thinking to myself, you know, like, I might not be able to have the nice things, but at least maybe if I move to a country where, that, where capitalism isn't just the driving factor that consumes everybody's fucking life, maybe I can be happy. Maybe. But I'm sure as hell not happy here. Okay, that didn't... That, 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 that's not right. Oh, that's why. I was I was a little bit off. Oh, cool. Well, I have actually made it sort of look a little bit like how I want it to, which is pretty cool. Happy with that. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Ah! Fuck. Fuck. 
Alright, let's see. Alright. What else have we got to look at today? Ooh. Area 51 is one of those games that I remember that I played oh, it's a and video I have game. a fond wave of nostalgia every time I see that gray face on the cover, but I don't remember a single thing from the game itself. Developed by Midway Austin in 2005, in the presence of other shooters at the time like Resident Evil 4, Fear, and Gun, it's no wonder the gameplay of Area 51 has sort of vacated my brain. However, I decided to revisit this game in 2022, 17 years after the fact to see what it's all about. Overall, the game is a solid shooter. It's got some decent voice acting and writing, and even though it's not the greatest game of the year, I mean, it's probably not even in the top 20 if we're being honest, it is a great time and it has a lot to offer. It's like the perfect military sci-fi B-movie vibe, so let's take a stroll into Area 51 and see what kind of secrets there is to uncover. As the title of the game suggests, this game takes place in Area 51, the infamous US military location rumored to have secret alien technologies, picked up after the Roswell, New Mexico incident in so the open 1940s. Source now. Oh, cool. You play as a hazmat operative in the US Army named Ethan Cole, who is sent into Area 51 with a team after there's some sort of viral outbreak within the confines of the military base. After a quick rendezvous with other military on the scene and some ominous foreshadowing of the virus outbreak as you arrive, you fearlessly dive into the depths of Area 51 and you find hordes of virus infected scientists, soldiers, and alien creatures trying to claw your eyes out. As you get deeper into the base, you find yourself uncovering the real reason that everything is going on. Unveiling secrets of the base like the Illuminati, aliens, Bigfoot, <laughs> fake moon landings, Sounds like Alex Jones is like favorite favorite game. That may or may not have anything to do with why you were there and if you will make it out alive. Of all the secrets in Area 51, perhaps none of them are as coveted as the ball trimming technology that is provided by Manscaped, the sponsor of today's video. It's the okay, that made it. That, okay, for a second there, I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Ball trimming? No. While there's a lot to fall in love with at Manscaped, the perfect package 4.0 is perfect for your package. Open it up. You get the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. The fourth generation. So I heard that these that Manscaped it's like it's really electric, it's um. It has a little flashlight for. Can you can get like nicked and shit? Skin safe technology. Which reduces nicks and ah! aliens know a lot about this stuff okay just ask the ball chinian it even has this dope little charging dock just drop it in and charge it without messing with any cords or anything and i know you've heard of crop circles but now we have crop preservers and crop revivers which are just fancy terms for ball deodorant and ball toner spray two things that i never knew i needed and it goes without saying my crop is fresher than ever on top of all this you get a disposable shaving mat in the form of a newspaper with funny ball trimming content all over it and two free gifts a nice travel bag for your alien and tech and some anti-chafe boxer briefs to keep the boys settled in tight start your new year off right head to manscaped.com to get 20 percent off plus free international shipping plus the two free gifts when you use promo code mr hammers at checkout thank you to manscaped for sponsoring this video now let's get back to area 51 Midway Austin, formerly known as Inevitable Entertainment before being acquired by Midway, has only made two games before Area 51. An online shooter with a focus on mobility named Tribes Aerial Assault that was actually the first PlayStation 2 game to support modem and broadband connections for online play, as well as a Hobbit game, an action-adventure game oddly loyal to Tolkien source material. These games did the job of getting Midway's I heard attention, that game. and they decided to get Inevitable on board to make an alien shooter that would be published by them. And they were so thrilled with the progress of the game in the middle of development that they acquired the whole studio and renamed them to Midway Austin before Area 51 was even complete. For the record, impressing Midway means absolutely shit to their bottom dollar, because after Midway Austin's second game, Black Sight Area 51, a sort of sequel to the game in question today, Midway closed down the whole studio in Austin in the middle of their development on some unknown game, laying off 90 to 130 people with little to no notice. Anyway, back to the game at hand here. Area 51 is actually a soft remake of a 1995 light gun game of the same name. The original light gun cabinet game had agents visiting Area 51 to stop an alien infection running rampant and uncovering some secrets of a government conspiracy, so the game is pretty loyal to the premise of the original idea. The majority of the game's engine was developed in-house by Midway Austin. Everything was built up just for- Is he using a gun- two guns with scopes? 
Then it's like, I'm just imagining them putting in, but one in each eye. Area 51, the PC-based editor, the rendering engine, the physics, and animations, all unique and proprietary to this one alien killing simulator. The primary goal of the game was to create a fast-paced run-and-gun style Fucking lol. shooter, and I think they reached that goal and then some. The secondary goal was something that I think they didn't quite capture too well. They wanted to start the game off with a solid squad-based experience, and although there is an effort into building some camaraderie and team morale with this ragtag group of hazmat operatives, I quite frankly could not give a fuck about these guys once bullets started flying. This guy right here loses his head, and it's supposed to be some monumental moment in the story, but I already forgot his name. The team is That's fucking awesome! One, and before the half That's fucking point, awesome! Game, alone. This game never felt like a squad-based game to me. It felt like a first-person shooter with some teammates that I had to carry to victory because they fed their asses off. On top of providing a solid single-player experience, quite a lot of time and effort was put into the multiplayer aspect of the game, particularly with the online multiplayer on consoles. In the year 2005, online multiplayer was still in its infancy on consoles, and with Inevitable Entertainment's fantastic work on tribes, Midway wanted to incorporate online play into their game as well. In Area 51, you could load up did this come out before or after Halo? Two thousand five. Two thousand one. Yeah, I can see. I can see so much like, like inspiration. I guess from Halo in this. 16 player lobbies and all sorts of different game modes. You had aliens versus humans, a team of humans versus hordes of AI enemies, an infection style game. Just in the, just in the, um, aliens, level the design, especially. Until the aliens outnumber the remaining humans and then they shift the tides of the game. This is all really inventive stuff for the time and even today. Game modes like that sound like a lot of fun. Unfortunately for me, playing this game in 2022, servers don't really. Halo 2 maybe? Yes! Yeah. Especially Halo 2. I'm sure there are some online communities out there that set up games. It just feels like the um the first level more common at this time in game of Halo 2. Of Hollywood actors and celebrities to voice characters in video games. One of the best games to do it came out the same year in 2005, and that was Gun. Area 51, however, follows suit with this trend. They got the lead actor from the X Files, David D'Angelo, to voice the protagonist. I don't know if it's because it's from so the cool. X Files and they deal with aliens and conspiracy, or if it's because he's done voice work in a few other games. But I can't see what the appeal is behind this guy's voice. He sounds absolutely bored out of his mind at all points in the story, and it's honestly pretty laughable at most points. By day three, I wanted to punch him in the face by day seven i did they also got powers booth to voice ethan's superior officer major bridges marilyn manson Who? takes the role of edgar an alien held uh, lines of area 51 fuck they that guy corpses throughout the game to communicate with you telepathically and the notable nolan north as private mccann the guy who lost his fucking mind and apparently james mccaffrey was credited with additional voices throughout the game it's kind of funny thinking that max Payne was running around area 51 as a frenzied lab tech or something i didn't know what the hell i was going to find up there but i sensed there wasn't going to be a stripper bursting out of a cake <laughs> The overall design There's an the internal is monologue in this game. It looks like a typical military bunker and secret facility of sorts. They had keycard access doors, lots of metal corridors, and all that jazz. But as the game goes on, it evolves into a much more secret filled laboratory. And eventually hey, Monkey Gamer, do you mean like um, abandonware when you there say open source? Put into making this game seem real and appropriate, at least on the more surface levels. There are cubicles, weapons caches, and laboratories, all things that you would expect to see in a place like Area 51. It was the abandoned function of these spaces that led to the horror that this game had to offer. Now, this game isn't a horror game, but there are some pretty great moments in the opening chapter. Lights are often out or flickering. You don't really know what the hell is going on or what you're up against. Yeah, that, this is this is a horror level, dude. Do you, do you wall. not know what a horror stuff, game is? I understand why some people remember this game. I swear, people people these days, our brains are broken because we don't know what horror was back then. That would have been fucking horrifying back in the day. Kids as one that scared them too much to play. Playing this game this year, the initial levels kind of reminded me of Dead Space. Not just because you're fighting mutated humans infected by an alien virus, but mostly at the havoc struck. Are you kidding me? That first section was Halo 2, the first level um, that you play as um, Master Chief. This is the fucking library. This is just the library. This is the, they like Halo. They made Halo in PlayStation. Seemingly mundane environments that just has its own unique style of terror. All they just own. made also, Halo. Cole is a bit like Isaac Clark in a way. Just a regular everyman. Ethan isn't a high-ranking soldier in the army. He just so like to be every to fucking game, game in outbreaks. existence. He even in little green men, as he calls them, before coming face to face with them. He's just a normal guy thrown into an extraordinary situation and is tasked with saving I thought wait he's in the army though what? Very similar to Isaac Clark, if you ask me. Who the is this guy? Have a necromorph vibe to them, you know, mutating humans using body horror and being that's cool and aggressive. That's they cool. Well done. They were actually done with the help of Stan Winston from Jurassic Park. That's really cool. That 2005. That's that is that is some really good shit. Didn't get that from Halo. Oh, Halo Two, we did get that. Yes, but not to that extent. That was that's that's an amazing cutscene. That cutscene looks fucking awesome. With Midway before on the suffering games, and he lent his expertise with the infected within Area 51 as well. The later levels sort of fell flat to me. They were yeah, nuts, but really the initial design in the first few chapters felt like such a strong. Yeah, this isn't. 
I'm sorry, but this doesn't this this isn't this isn't Dead Space at all. Dead Space is was never about throwing hordes of enemies at you. And uh you and before you say the teenage the teenage mutants from fucking Dead Space 2, they were the worst they were the worst implementation of a of an enemy enemy in Dead Space. Changed my mind. I was on neon lit walkways fighting enemies that spawned within orbs. It was just kind of bland and failed to make itself distinct in any way. And how is this guy not talking about Halo? What do you? What the fuck is is this? Oh yeah, it's definitely a lot like Dead Space. Okay. It's a first-person shooter for one thing, not a third-person shooter. This is high charity. This is literally just high charity. Sorry, I'm I, I am I'm a bit of a Halo nerd up until Halo Four. Halo Four completely destroyed it for me. I wouldn't mind actually going through and playing the games. It was just kind of bland and failed to like, make itself distinct. That, that, look at look 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 at all of that. Look at look at all that, that's high charity. That's just high charity. Anyway. And paired with the poor design of having interactive- Like, and I'm not saying that they ripped off Halo, like, they made their own game, obviously, from this. Obviously, they've got some amazing fucking work into this. Like, the, that, 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 that body horror? Amazing. But this is not Dead Space, this is Halo. This is just Halo. Ooh, Hex, Hex gone. Things being marked super small and hard to see. I got lost in a couple spots because I didn't know what to do, and I thought the game had bugged out. But with that being said, let's talk about the bread and butter of this game. The gameplay. Are you serious? You got confused because you didn't go up to the green, the glowing green icon. I'm sorry. I like maybe I maybe I'm just dumb. Maybe I'm about the just bread and butter like of this game. The gameplay. Mm. Through and through, this game is a first-person shooter, and without FOV mods, it's a very restrictive one. The weapons feel nice to shoot, and even the starter pistol feels adequate. And I found myself using it even in later levels, mostly because I was out of. Are you telling me you? So you're telling me this game has a pistol in it that is useful throughout the entire game and you're not talking about you're not talking about halo and with everything else but hey it got the job done for the first half of the game you are running and gunning with your hat this is frustrating you standard weaponry for a soldier like a pistol a shotgun and a submachine gun this submachine gun's actually pretty sweet i like how you can see real time through the scope as you walk around even though you can't actually aim down the scope to shoot it which is <clears> kind of dumb anyway it's this portion of the game that feels good because of the that is dumb you're in. it's a solid that game sounds like it sounds like a lack of time for implementation right around that time when you get your ass infected with a mysterious alien virus Dead Space for me, the brilliant part of Dead Space for me is the rising tension throughout the first game, for, throughout the first time you play the game. Like, I'm just talking about Dead Space, the first game. Like, the best part about that game was how you, you, were, you were an engineer and the whole time you're doing, well, you're doing like, you know, hands-on engineering shit, right? Like, it made sense that you would upgrade your weapons, it made sense that you would be going to here to fix a thing and going to there. Like, the point wasn't that you were there to kill off- to kill a bunch of enemies. The point was that you were trying to get through the enemies to do what you needed to do. And when you- you got there, you did the thing, and then something else happens that fucks everything else up. And that's what I loved about the game is how it just kept on getting worse and worse until you end up end up with this existential fucking threat in front of you, um, which I mean, like the the final boss fight is a little bit meh um, because the the idea that that you could defeat a creature that size like that, I think it should should have definitely doubled down on the aspect of dropping the. Um, the asteroid onto on top of it and working out ways to keep it in place to do that um no i did not but like see like i do have criticisms for the final boss in dead space like it shouldn't have just been like a isaac versus big monster battle that 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 was that 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 was dumb and stupid and i kind of liked the idea that they went with for the second for dead space 2 where instead of fighting a big giant dumb monster at the end you're actually just fighting inside your own mind like that that was a better that was a better outcome haven't finished haven't played through dead space 3 so don't have an opinion on that one but yeah best part about dead space wasn't about the 
for me it was just trying to get through everything it what you weren't you, you were the every man like he said like but this doesn't seem like you're an everyman. It seems like you're just like soldier tearing through enemies. Yeah, this is Halo. Spiced up a little bit. Not only do you get some fancy alien abilities like enhanced speed, hearing, and vision, and some gnarly melee hits, but you can also shoot some parasites out of your palms like a freaky Bioshock plasmid. This is fun for the first few levels that you have it, but it's an ability that cool. you find yourself only using when necessary later in the game. And that's because the parasites you shoot out leech health from the enemy, healing you while also keeping you in the fight. Scattered around, you find plenty of ammunition and grenades to kill all of your enemies, but you also find two different types of syringes: green ones for health and orange ones for your mutation. While Ethan is infected with the virus, he can only stay in the mutated phase for a brief period of time, and using abilities, like parasites, drains that time even faster. So you need to keep an eye out for syringes of both kinds before each fight to make sure you are well prepared. Either that or find an That is the tiniest health indicator I've ever seen, by the way. As well. <laughs> Ethan's specialty within his hazmat crew is his scanner. You have an apparatus on your wrist that you can use to scan things within your environment that supposedly helps you and your team analyze and dissect to further understand the virus. In reality, all this I had a lot of like, ideas with it. secrets and lore entries for your reading pleasure. A lot of them are actually pretty interesting. They all sort of feed into the conspiracy theory side of the game. You can find items and documents related to Bigfoot, crop circles, the Illuminati, the JFK assassination, the faked moon landing, and many more things that make you <sighs> secure your tinfoil hat. Even though this is a relatively short game, the combat does start yeah. to seem stale after a while. And that's not helped at all by the fact that there's only a handful of different enemies in the entire game that don't switch up gameplay style too much. You essentially only have two different enemies. First, you have your infected humans. These are the enemies throughout the first half of the game. They come in a this few This is just, just like, scientists that just kind of run screams to me that this was a game you, made by gamers. So you know what I mean? They, they weren't in. just dead. Devs, they were also passionate about the games that they play, which is really cool. The next type of enemies are the Illuminati super soldiers. These are hybrid alien human creations that are pretty much just dudes with guns. And they come in a spicy flavor. They have a little more health than King Kong. Oh, time. Gills, just, gills like, flapping in the air. There's other enemies scattered about as well. There's these big motherfuckers that function as sort of boss fights. You fight them a few times in the game, and you will most definitely use every bullet and every gun that you have to defeat them. You have these dirty bubble from SpongeBob looking things. They're honestly were never really explained. They just look like fucking soap suds that can kill you. And then you have the Greys, the quintessential alien in the game. You don't actually fight them though they like to use proxy devices to try to kill you like turrets <coughs> and illuminati super soldiers that they control that's cool and they even throw a big bastard at you once but they themselves don't fight you sometimes they're in a level wrapped in a shroud that you need to destroy and i think you kill a few in these moments but overall these guys don't really like to scrap and they look pretty chill half the time even though gameplay is why everyone remembers this game there is a story here and it's honestly not terrible at least we protected that truck he was after what would it carry that's so important The plot of the game starts all the way back in July of 1947. Not really. But back then in New Mexico, there was a UFO crash. The US military showed up to the crash site and found a lone survivor of the ship, a gray alien named Edgar. Edgar was taken back to Area 51 and held captive there. Eventually, the alien species, lovingly named Greys, start conversing with none other than the Illuminati, led by the ominous Mr. White, and they struck a deal. Basically, a technology trade agreement. The Greys were provided with a research base with human scientists about three miles below the surface of Area 51, where they are free to come and go as they please as they are given a landing site for their UFOs. They are also given human test subjects to experiment on in order to craft a mutagenic virus to use in a war that's going on on their home planet. In exchange for this, they agreed to share all of their technology and knowledge with the Illuminati, which they gladly used on their citizens to spy on them and keep themselves in power. Eventually, the Greys and scientists develop a powerful alien being known as the Theta, which spreads the virus around. And as the Illuminati do, they have some secret shit going on in the form of using this mutagenic virus on the human population. That to definitely the looks like a mutated to, um, Dr. Winston Cray found out about an plan, elite. He released the virus inside of Area 51 prematurely in an effort to shed some light on the whole shebang and hopefully slow the Illuminati down. This virus outbreak resulted in the military sending out a quick reaction force named Hazmat Team Delta. They were deployed to quarantine the base and stop the virus from spreading to the US population. Hazmat Team Delta unfortunately came face to face with the Theta and suddenly switched teams. So obviously now they send in Hazmat Team Bravo, the crew with our main boothing, Ethan Cole running the scans, to do the same task as Team Delta, but also given the secondary task to uh, find Delta. Quickly it's revealed, shit is pretty crazy in Area 51 and Hazmat Team Bravo starts to lose some ranks. McCann is decapitated, Crispy and Ramirez are both murked by a wild Theta and suddenly Ethan Cole is all alone. But this doesn't stop him from finding the remains of Team Delta, and just when he finds them, it's shortly thereafter that they're all killed anyway by the Wild Theta. And it's just Cole all alone again. Well, actually, he has Lieutenant Chu from Delta, but that doesn't really last long because it's here where the Illuminati shows up and they aren't really that friendly to say the least. After blowing up the lift that Cole and Chu are on, Chu falls to his death, while Cole falls a lesser height and is woken from his unconscious stupor by a mutant biting his ass, causing him himself to become mutated, but not fully for some reason or another. He can control his mutation, at least for the time being. This allows Cole to switch back and forth from mutant to human, and he's given some spiffy new mutant powers to play with. As Cole goes deeper 
deeper into the base of Area 51, he is constantly met with reanimated corpses, communicating to him telepathically controlled by the Grey named Edgar. Edgar guides Cole to Dr. Cray in his lab, where he is promised to be decontaminated of his mutated state, ridding him of the alien virus. But of course, before the decon is complete, the Illuminati show up, killing Dr. Cray and stopping the process of his lab equipment. Cole keeps going deeper underground to hopefully find a cure or answers to what is going on. It's here he finds the wild Theta and fights him to the death, avenging all of those who perished at his hand. Before the Theta's body can even get cold, Edgar picks up the corpse to invite Ethan to meet him face to face. Eventually he does find Edgar, who reveals to Ethan that the scientists used Edgar's DNA to make the mutagenic virus, and he explains that many of his own kind as well as humans were sacrificed to make it. He offers up his blood to Ethan, as if he injects it, it will cure him. In exchange, he tells Ethan to go and stop the departing gray ship that contains dozens of Theta duplicates that will not only infect the gray home planet, but also all of planet Earth. Ethan finds and destroys the ship by Jeez. overloading its reactor, not without the attempt of the grays and Illuminati. So, wait, 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 They're sending out a virus that's gonna destroy, like, all sentient life in the universe, and he needs to stop it? stop him from doing so. Once the reactor is destroyed, the explosion is triggered. Ethan escapes through a galaxy portal that drops him in the Nevada desert, right next to a white mailbox that is a play on the real-life mailbox that's on a road called the Extraterrestrial Highway in the middle of the desert, where alien fanatics all venture out to and hold up <coughs> their foes. Ethan watches Area 51 being destroyed by the exploding gray alien ship before seeing a truck drive by, leaving the area with some sort of alien technology in the back covered by a tarp. At least we protected that truck he was after. What what is carrying that's so important. Not knowing which way to go, Ethan simply reflects on what just happened. He learned that aliens exist, he learned that the Illuminati exist, and even though his whole team died horrific deaths, he damn near single-handedly saved the human race from an alien virus. So take that, Mr. White. I like that. It's poetic. Area 51 was made for the PlayStation 2 it, it rhymes. but the game was also released on Xbox and PC. The PC version was funny enough sponsored by the US Air Force, along with some other games, and released for free by them with some recruitment ads, of course. But I find it hilarious that a game about the US military and Area 51, aliens, conspiracy, and the Illuminati was actually co-signed by the real military. And released Why would that not be fucking hilarious? Come on. It's, it's literally the same as, you know, these thirst trap TikToks. It's just fucking psyop shit. The point isn't... The plot. The point is, you're shooting guns as a soldier and you're being normalized into that behavior, being normalized into the idea that being a soldier means being heroic. Like, that's the point. They worked on 2016, uh, Doom 2016. Fuck yeah. Oh, Saints Row. I was going to say Saints Row, but I don't know why I thought about Saints Row. I, I can't remember and a campaign to have people enlist in the Air Force. That's just really funny to me that that happened in real life. The PC version of this game has had quite a bit of support and attention ever since its release, with multiple overhauls and patches to fix the game on modern machines, and keep the game alive and well. Project Dreamland and Area 51 Preservation Project are two of the biggest ones, and the people behind these things are truly saints. I love people that strive to keep games alive, because as a consumable media, compared to movies and TV and such, games are easily lost to time, and can become incredibly hard to get and get running many years later. So, yeah. shout out to those guys. Not surprisingly, reviews for the game were average. It wasn't a bad game at all, but the game really didn't break any but like. Ideas. The, the the horny TikTok girls don't get people, horny men, to enlist. It just normalizes um, the military to the public. It's just normalizing it. It's the same reason why... It, it's the same reason why people in the LGBTQIA plus community post and we make ourselves visible. It's not about the messages behind what we're saying. The fact is that I'm visible and I'm here. The US government is doing the same. Or change the face of... Like, like I'm not I'm not having a go at you. I'm just sort of like this is something that annoys me in general is this idea that this need that people have to create conspiracies when like the the real logic and the real thing is like staring you straight in the face. Like the the US government sponsors anything that has military in it in order to try and increase the amount of normalization of military um of seeing military imagery the idea that war is normalized like that's why that that that's why they do it no it's not try it's not a psyop it's not like trying to like brainwash you because brainwashing is not real it's it, it's it's fiction it's a fiction it, it's made up brainwashing doesn't exist um, and you can look to the government's own declassified documents into MK Ultra to find out this. 
it's it, the information is right there. That that's what I mean. It's like people need to have like the secret knowledge. Like oh, you know, they're, they're trying. They're they're putting you know subliminal messages in messages in it. Blah blah blah. They're trying to prepare. They're they're trying to prepare us for for when the aliens do attack. They're trying to prepare us. Like the aliens are here, but they're sending more and more of these conspiracy stuff to to prepare the. The, the nation is like no 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 they just want to normalize mili the military within gamer culture and with culture in general uh the amount of movie movies that are given equipment and footage to, so, so that they push media the american american military is always in the right yeah but like the question this guy had in this in this thing is it's like why are they doing the conspiracy stuff because they don't care about the conspiracy stuff they care that a the american military is the good guy and b the American military military is like star has a starring role. Like the the American military needs the starring role role basically. We need to they it needs to be normalized within culture. It's shooting mechanics and Marilyn Manson voiceovers. Like other midway games at the time. There also Marilyn Manson cringe, fucking abusive piece of shit. There was talk of the game being licensed as a movie with Paramount Pictures announcing at one point they reached an agreement for the film rights for the game. With comic book author Grant Morrison being hired to adapt the game as a screenplay. But as of now the film is considered dead and there's really no news surrounding it or. What happened to it? Two years after the release of this game, Midway Austin released a game called Black Sight Area 51. It Hold on a second. It wasn't really a sequel to this game, it was more like a spiritual reimagining of the series that has nothing to do with the prior game other than Aliens. And if it takes place in the same universe as the prior game, then it would be a prequel because, well, Area 51 isn't exploded. But I don't think it ties into the first game at all anyway. And who knows what game Midway Austin was working on when Midway decided to drop the guillotine down on their necks in the middle of development. Maybe it was another Area 51 game, another tangent storyline, or perhaps a direct sequel to one of them. The world may never know. I plan on covering that the next That looks on this like Halo again. Well, if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on that, be sure to subscribe and stay in touch. Like I said, I didn't remember any of the plots or really gameplay at all from this game. I always remember a documentary where a CIA officer explained how a major UFO just that was up from the documents was literally being fucked with for decades and was paying too much attention to it to look alarm base. It was testing things, so instead they fed into his UFO beliefs that the actual secrets weren't released. I remember the, hearing about that one. Yeah, it's, it's none of it's real. There might be aliens, there might not be, but do you really think that... that there, do you... Yes, you may really think that the government is keeping it secret, but I'm sorry, but, like, a secret of that magnitude is not... People aren't able to keep secrets like that. We're just not able to. It, information would have gotten through by now. Like, solid evidence. Because we, <clears throat> we do have all of these conspiracies that the governments have done and have so much evidence for that nobody pays attention to because they want to believe that aliens exist. I knew that I had played it and I remember the little gray alien on the cover staring me down from the shelf. Taking a I'm sorry to tell you this but because of the fur because of the Fermi's paradox and and um because of um the age of our solar system the chances of any alien species being currently alive and capable of space flight in order to reach us specifically us in our corner of the universe is so close to zero like the you know, there's there is a very there's almost probably an almost a hundred percent chance that alien life is out there but because of the age, the young age, like the super fucking young age of our planet and our own evolution, the chances of those alien species, like sentient species, being alive still and not extinct by now is so fucking low. Yeah, like the, the, people don't understand, like. Time is a time is relative, yes, but it's also a concept when you're looking at the idea of aliens being in other planets. The idea of a sentient race that we can communicate with, um, still existing, uh, is is kind of fantasy. Like they more likely be extinct by now uh, because they couldn't um, couldn't. Uh, um, Past the uh, what is it? What's it called? The walls? Yeah, I don't think the only life is even dumber. <sighs> yeah, we think we're only special ones, but like it's like it, it is. It is a not. It is probably a higher likelihood that uh, we're alone 
where, the, where we could be the lone sentient race in this corner of the universe and we're never going to experience we're, we're much more likely to come across the ruins of old civilizations than we are to like meet anything still alive that that's just because of the age of the universe and the age of our pocket of the universe and specifically our our solar system is that young it's very 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 unlikely a look back at this game has shed a little light on my nostalgia. There were definitely some moments that piqued my memory, like meeting Edgar and little gray aliens doing a live autopsy on some poor dude. I have to say this game was pretty fun by modern standards. It's a campy and cliche military alien shooter, but it fits it's a that fun thing to. It's, it's a fun thing to. It's a fun game. It's a fun thing to a thought experiment. It's a fun thing to play around with, but like don't, don't like. They they either they either they either move past capitalism or they died out. Um. Don't base your life around the idea that aliens exist, because there are actual systems and problems in place right now which are much more dangerous to your life. Like I always say, like, how many people have died from ghosts versus shootings in America? You can actually look this up, by the way, because uh, you can be murdered by a ghost in America legally. Da 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 da. Ah, it's hard to find murder cases. Ghosts. Da 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 da. There's the Hammersmith ghost murder case uh, that ha someone could be uh, uh, could be held liable for actions even if they were the mistaken of it. No, that wasn't it. Um, fucking hell. Well, I guess I guess they don't. There's no number. Death by. Ghosts. Statistic. No. 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 Fucking hell. I, I know that the, this number is uh, non-zero because um, there are laws in America which, um, which like, treat ghosts as real. Um, so, like, I'm sure someone's been, someone's been considered dead as, as a result of a go ghost. But here we go, like, the, the, look how hard it is to actually find this. <clears throat> how many people? Ask yourself how many people you know have died from a ghost uh, versus old age or heart attack or gun violence or a traffic accident or you know something realistic. There are real dangerous things out there, and it's not worth being scared about things that uh, probably. Either, well, I'm not saying they don't exist, but these problems, this problem will never exist in your life. Really a great time. The game chance of that happening is, is like so close to zero. Game. It is negligible. Retro stores and online are pretty cheap as well if you want to play it on the console. I can give a solid recommendation for this game. If as I say, as I say, the chances of uh, anything coming from Mars is a million to one. In a mood for a sci-fi shooter with decent gameplay, decent plot, and some mediocre voiceover. It's not the best game ever, but it's a solid five to six hours of rootin' tootin' alien shooting. I want to take this time to give a big thank you to my patrons. You guys are amazing. Thank you for supporting me and what I do yeah, here. And for everybody else, as always, I, did, I disagree with this guy when it comes to um, I, to when it comes to like I th this guy is so Mr. Mr. Hammers obviously hasn't played much Halo and uh, like that's okay because like not everyone likes that game. I'm just like a freak who was used to be obsessed with the for the original trilogy. Um, don't forget to throw a like, subscribe, um. Comment. Oh, yes, it did. Oh, don't, please don't get me into, like, how, don't make me nerd out over how, how Halo influenced the game, like, the video game development, like, just, 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 the, the idea of shields 
completely revolutionizing like i know that halo was not the first one to implement shields but it was the one that popularized it there is a difference um halo popularized the use of shields to allow large scale battles right so like um so like halo revolutionized it because up until that point a lot of most shooters and i know some of them had in had had in, had you know like regenerating health but halo popularized it um don't at me um but up until halo you could only have a set amount of uh, enemies per zone otherwise it would become too difficult difficulty was set at the amount of enemies between health um, health drop locations. When Halo brought in its shield technology, you still had to pick up health drops, but at the same time you could have much more, like, have much large scale, larger scale battles. Like, Halo, um, was, it, its focus was on creating these large scale epic battles against, like, hordes of aliens. Like, that's, that's what it popularized. It changed the way we did it. Like, you could argue that, uh, Halo was the, uh, start of the, uh, casual gamer, you know? Like, the, the, the gamer that isn't into, like, to play Wolfenstein 3D or Doom or any of these old games that, uh, relied on nothing but health pickups. Like, you needed to have a certain level of skill and you'd have to have, you'd have to remember where enemies were. Whereas Halo, you could do it through trial and error. You could go back to um, health, health. You could get get to health drops and all that, these sorts of things. Um, you you could you could just yeah, just just let loose. All you need is like five seconds of um, cover, and then you'd be back into the fray. It's just beautiful, and and the use of skyboxes as well to to make you feel as if the world is larger than it was. Just mm, really, really good, and the music. The music, just everything about the game, uh, made a lot of casuals into yeah. <laughs> it was uh, you got to admit that was a really good that that the use of that song in Halo Two um, was perfect. Like when you walk into that big hallway and you see them all fighting each other, and suddenly it's just so good. No, I refuse. I do not care. I'm sorry. I, I hate I hate the idea that I, I hate having I hate reading video like books about video games. I could barely stand um I could barely stand the um um Star Wars extended universe aside from um X Wing uh, the X Wing series, which I wish they could do that. Just do that, D Disney. Just make the X Wing series. Don't change anything. Just make that. It's really good. Even though I know that. Luke is gone. Well, I guess you could do it in between the uh, sequels. Hmm. Where are you sending it to me? Are you sending it in chat or are you sending it to me um, through um, Discord? Because I'm going to wrap up for the day now. Sadly, the spot doesn't show. They're, they're, yeah, they're. they're, they're, they're um... Oh, good. So that well i mean like done randomly like that 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 is to me that that sort of backstory stuff is halo 4 onwards and i don't care about it because i um, yeah it does it it never it sh never mattered never should have mattered never should have been talked about they should have like created something new after halo 3 and then just like no nah, no nah. bring back bring back uh the arbiter bring back the arbiter bring back keith david's he was excellent. Um, but yeah, that is it for me today. So I'll be back tomorrow. Hopefully, satisfactory won't crash again. Hopefully, I didn't lose that too much progress. Fuck. Um, but until next time, take care of yourself, take care of yourself, and take care of someone else. And I'll see you tomorrow. Love you all. Mwah.